Welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. It is the Star Wars tournament, the finals. We are here. I'm Christian Harloff, joined as always by my partner in crime here, Mark. Baby Carrots Ellis. Mark, how you doing, my friend? Well, Christian, after the events of yesterday, I can no longer in good faith be called Baby Carrots. I've changed my name to Middle-Aged Vegetable Medley, which is not caught on with anyone. However, I will say I am thrilled to be here joining you for one of the most epic matches that we're ever going to see. Now, in some other galaxy, Christian, they're probably playing schmodowns about action movies or comedies or dramas. But in this galaxy, here today... The only thing that matters is the greatest franchise in the history of movies, and that would be why I'm wearing this tie, Star Wars. It all goes down today. You know what's so crazy about all of this? Because this tournament, normally we always do the singles matches or the teams tournaments, the singles te- tournaments, the, the inner geekdom tournament is happening. The Star Wars tournament wasn't supposed to happen, and normally we do around three or four Star Wars matches uh, per season. Well, we did one, and man, you listen to some of the veterans in this league, someone like a Ben Bateman who said he's on the edge of his seat watching these matches and how great these matches have been. And the two competitors here today are two of the reasons why we've had these incredible, incredible battles. You look at Andre, Andres uh, Cabrera and Andrew Dimolanta, the hunter versus Ace. This is um, a match nobody knew we were going to get. We didn't. I mean, some people thought Dimolanta could do it. He came into the tournament 0 and 2. People have been doubting him, but no one's really doubting his knowledge, right? So once he beats Scrimshaw, people are like, nah, he'll probably get. He, most likely, he can get to the finals here. And Molly Damon gave him a pretty good fight. No one had Andres Cabrera except his manager, Winston Marshall, maybe some people on his faction. Nobody had him going here. He's been talking about Upset City. He's the only competitor in Star Wars trivia history in the Schmodown to go 3-0, and Mark. Yeah, I mean, Christian, as a runner-up in the spelling bee and as a winner of Battle of the Books in 1993, I know my way around a sporting tournament. And what we love in a showcase like this, when you have your brackets, everybody picks their horse who they think is going to go all the way. And it's great when they get shattered. You have your Cinderella stories. You have your Goliaths. And then it all comes down to two. And Andres, I don't even know that people thought he would make it into the bracket that I'm talking about. And with Andrew DeMolanta, yes, I think a lot of people thought he has game but they didn't know if he was going to get over that hurdle when we began this tournament he was 0-2 and he was still looking for his first victory and he was so hungry and sometimes you just get that monkey off your back and you say oh well now i can coast he has not coasted ace has only gotten stronger with each passing victory and so now we really are at a meeting of the minds i don't know what lightsaber duel in star wars you compare this to but it feels like somebody's gonna win and somebody's getting their hand cut off well, yeah, and they're gonna. It's there's a lot at stake. Not only do they get some points, some more points for their factions, which is really, really big right now, considering that the Finstock Exchange is up by six points over Swag. Swag right now is just six points behind in the rankings. There you have it right there. The Finstock Exchange, 25 points. Swag, 19 points. If Andres Cabrera can do it today and he can br- bring up this tournament, this match is, is, is worth three points. Knockout would be four points, obviously, but it would get them a little bit closer in this five round battle here. However, if the exchange does it, they'll be up. They'll, they'll put another little cushion under that, that comfy lead they have right now, Mark. Yeah, I mean, uh, three more points for the Finstock Exchange, and you're going to match their manager's IQ. As far as the the Team Swag is very interesting to me because Team Swag, it, you start out and you still have that underdog mentality, but then you look at the standings, and they've been climbing the ranks pretty steadily. And so I don't think that they look at themselves as underdogs anymore. I know for a fact Andres does not, but he still has one more giant hurdle to get through, and that is Andrew Demolanta. So wherever you want to start, Christian, the table has been set. I'm feeling pretty good. I am too. And look, like we said, not only is this for points, not only is this for the glory of saying you are the winner, but the winner of this match will get a shot at the most dominant champion that we have ever seen in the Schmodown in any division. This man has been the champion for over two years now. He hasn't lost a a Star Wars match in over three. He is the reigning movie trivia Schmodown Star Wars champion of the world. Also, big time inner geekdom. Competitor has a big match coming up this week against Brandon Hanna, but he is the demon. Alex Damon is here. What's up, champ? How are you doing here? As you're watching this entire thing, this is, I heard you on backstage. This tournament has just been something else, hasn't it? Yeah, this has just straight up changed the Star Wars League. I mean, everything 
is different. It's more intense. <laughs> the the competitors, the question writers have really upped their game. Uh, everything has been impressive. And still, despite harder questions, people are throwing perfect games throughout this thing. It's awesome. You know, Christian, it's nice to hear Alex say that it's even harder questions than maybe some matches that he's played that have earned him that belt. So Alex, we, we hear since the dawn of man that heavy is the head that wears the crown. How's your waist doing right now? Can it hold up for another six months and maybe beyond? I mean, I'm grateful, I'll say, that I have, a, what, five months to study. Uh, I'm going to need it, but frankly, there are plenty of numbers and weird things that Molly and I have been studying for years. Uh, things that we've had written down that were like, oh, they're never going to ask about this, but we still have it. And now I'm excited. I'm excited that I'm going to get to spout off some, like, random numbers and letters and that's going to count as an answer that that's just thrilling to me alex i have to ask you, i know you were on uh backstage and you were a little hesitant about giving uh your predictions because you know you like you said you, you like both these guys you're watching what they've been doing but right now putting you on the spot who do you think will be taking you on for that title in december I think that this is going to be basically a coin flip. Both of these guys have thrown perfect matches. I think that the deciding factor could be the new round. Uh, the speed round is interesting. And I know that uh, both of these guys have the knowledge. Uh, Dimalanta has had some little slip ups with details here and there. And I worry for him in the speed round. I, I hope that he keeps that under control. So uh, my, my guess is Cabrera, but I know that Di Melanta has that accuracy. I know that he can do it too. Uh, and frankly, he's scarier. All right, well, there you go. So the demon, the champion who will be back, he'll be probably talking to the winner of the match. I got to thank you, champ, for joining us here, and we'll see you in just a little bit. See you. All right, Alex Damon, the demon, getting ready to take on one of these two. This is going to be something, but Mark, the hype is real. We are excited. We are ready. And you know who else is ready? The great Nerd Chronic, as we have seen some serious hype build up for this match. And you want to see it? Well, great. Here you go. I feel like give me a little bit more time. I can prep. I can learn. This is my first time in the ring. So if I get a second chance, I feel like I can improve. So I want to improve and I want to face off against somebody. Welcome, Andrew DeMolanta to Upset City. I'm focused. I've been watching for the omens. I've been listening to everything you said. It's been running through my head, locked and loaded. I was like, people counted you out of this whole tournament. Destroy their bracket entirely. The thing about Andrew DeMolanta is he hasn't won yet. A lot of times, a great story in sports, right? It doesn't always come true. Yeah, I've only just begun I won't stop until it's done till you broken glad you made it I've always known who you are but now you know who I am so welcome to the fire I'm the one with the light one of the greatest Star Wars matches I think we've ever seen played One of the biggest upsets in Schmodown history. One of the biggest upsets in tournament history. Ace Cabrera becoming the only 3-0 competitor in Schmodown Star Wars history. Now on this Rocky-esque journey, I thought Cavedo was going to beat him. Knapsack was going to beat him. I was sure Laura Kelly was going to beat him. And now here he is finding himself in the finals. That's a pretty incredible journey, Jim. So here we are in the finals. And again, Everybody seems to be down to me. For almost a year now, all I've had to hear was, is he good enough to, to win in this division? I've had to work and grind for everything I've gotten in this division, and I still don't get the credit that I feel that I should get. I've been waiting for this moment, the final battle of the chosen. See, I'm never gonna quit, got my legacy set in motion. What's going on? I mean, it's me, Tommy Versace. Gucci, your time was great, but Gucci's a thing of the past. The exchange, thing of the past. It's about swag now. 
Look, Swag has a nice team here. Flavor of the week. Week with an A. We are the flavor of the year. This guy had that fire and he said, I will not let you down. And he did not. Before I flew in on an X-Wing to have some fun, but now I'm flying in the Tiderium to take this challenge seriously. You hear me, Harloff? Tiderium. Let's continue the hunt. This is literally what competition is made of. This is what sports are made of. This is the stuff that inspires people. We're going to the finals, then we're going to Damon, and then we're walking away into the sunset. That's what that is right here. I want to see you two scrappers scrap till this is over. And I'm bringing it all the way back home. Because guess what? I've been spinning fire all this time. And fire is rising. And fire is catching. And if you think you're going to win, you're going to end up getting burned. So welcome to the fire I'm the one with the lighter Finger burning through your veins As we're walking through the flames Getting higher So welcome to the fire Welcome to the fire Finger burning through your veins As we're walking through the flames Yeah, I guess that promo was all right. I Look, hope so we... I'm getting a little tired of this. You and I open with a crisp intro, and I think, hey, you know, we're pretty good at our job. And then Nerd Chronic comes in with the trailer like that. I can't follow that. I, that's the headliner. I need to get him a belt. Uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you right now that that was. It. But but to be fair, as as great of, of a promo and editor as he is, uh, he needs he needs content. He needs context and. Boy, have Dimolanta and Cabrera given him more than that. And you know who else has given him that? The managers. The managers have given a lot of heart, a lot of soul, as much as you want to say. I know that uh, Dagnino is an absolute buffoon. I mean, I understand that. He's a, he's, a, he's a walking lunatic. I get it. He cares a lot about this game. He cares a lot about his faction. Uh, he calls me at times. I wish that he wouldn't to talk about his faction over and over and over and over again. He loves the game. He really does. And there's a reason why he's in first place. But Winston Marshall, just as passionate. And you saw it in that post speech. So let's bring him in. The, uh, the manager of both Swag, Winston Marshall, a.k.a. Tommy Versace, and Bobby Gucci himself. Mm -hmm. um, Gentlemen, you have made it to the finals. Gooch, you said you were going to be in the finals from the beginning. Winston knew it, but not everybody else knew it. So let me start with you, Gucci. Talk to me about what Ace has done here, and have you been impressed for the performance of what he's done thus far in the tournament? Oh, for sure. I mean, you can't doubt the guy. I mean, look, like you said earlier, he beat he you know beat Jose Cuervo, whatever the guy's name is. Then he beat Knapsack, but Knapsack was on his way out. I really thought for sure he had no chance at beating Laura Kelly, and he did it. I mean, the guy's got fire in his eyes. Like I said last week, this guy's coming to play. But let me tell you something here. The Finstock Exchange does not believe in fairy tales. So this little Cinderella ride that Swag is on right now, newsflash, there ain't going to be a glass slipper at the end. The magic carpet ride, over. Winston, uh, look, man, you have been talking. I, I brought this up many times. You had the so much faith in Andres. You got Andres has given you a lot of credit for getting him here. And you're right on the tail of the Finstock exchange. How much does this mean to you at the moment? First of all, for those that are familiar, Welcome to the Versace verse. You know what I'm saying? You've been in the Gucci verse for a while, but that's the darkest timeline. That's a galaxy far, far away. We in the real one now. That's the first thing. I got my I got my boys behind me. You see, I got the whole crew lined up. I got the Death Star ready. We're ready for y'all. And 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 it comes down to to essentially what this is. You know, Bobby Gucci said that we're a fairy tale, that we're a flavor of the week. W-E-A-K, I believe he said. It's funny, for somebody that's so fit, you certainly talk a lot about ice cream. That's a little wild, first of all. Uh, second of all, yeah, I knew it. You know why I knew it? It's in his name, Ace. What Ace mean? Ace in the hole, Ace of spades. Like, come on now. We were, we were born to do this. Ace Cabrera, Andres, was born to do this. 
All right, now I, I hear these answers and I see the, these new looks and uh, very well done, Winston. I would recommend not itching your head with a blaster top, but that's you do you. Now, when we talk about pressure, so often I'm on here and I'm asking the managers about, hey, how are you keeping your players' nerves calm? But now I'm just going to ask, starting with you, Winston, and then you, Bobby Gucci, where are your nerves right now? Are the butterflies in your tummy a fluttering? I'm fine. I don't know what you're talking about. Totally That's fine. No, real, real talk. I'm, I'm totally fine. I, I don't have any butterflies at all. You know why? Because the same way that when I learned about gravity, the same way that when I learned that the sun rises and sets every day, the same way that I have learned the facts of life, if you will, I've learned to trust Ace with all of my heart and all of my soul, which means that it's go time, baby. Okay, and uh, from the Gucci-verse, the pressure that you're feeling on your broad shoulders. Well, I mean, first of all, if you don't have butterflies for this, you're a crazy man. Uh, oh, I'm sweating. Everybody's sweating. Well, it's hot outside. But let me tell you something here. Totally confident in this man's ability. Uh, we're going to see what happens here. This is a five-rounder, okay? And once again, all heroes might not wear capes, but they do wear Gucci. All right. Well, with that, we will say thank you. Played out designer. It, come on now. All right, Winston, thank you very much for joining us here. And thank you to Bobby Gucci. Going to remove both of those guys. Mark, the managers are ready. We're ready. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking it was the Phantom's purple jumpsuit. That was Gucci. Wow. All right. Yeah, you learn something new every day. And I think with that information in my head, I am now ready for five rounds of Star Wars greatness. Ace versus the Hunter. Christian, at your ready, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Introducing first, representing the Finstock Exchange with a record of two wins, two defeats, in the Star Wars division. He is Andrew the Hunter Dimolota. The Hunter has arrived. Look, man, I've known you now for a little bit from your first audition back year and a half whatever it was i have seen a fire in your eyes of other competitors that i've seen and there seems to be correct me correct me if i'm wrong a little bit of a chip on your shoulder it seems like you're a little bit angry a little i mean you seemed a little upset on the previous special am i am i uh, am i misreading that or how, how have you been going into uh, this match yeah there's a chip on my shoulder because like i said in the in the, um, the pre preview match uh, special Everybody wants to vote against me now. They all want to go on the ace train now because I had a little slip up in my second match. So yeah, there's a chip on my shoulder that I want. I want to prove that I'm, I'm one of the the, the greats in this division, and that I will be be meeting Alex after this. So yeah, there is a chip. Andrew, there's a buzz in the air, and we've seen it on social media this week. We've seen it in the chat rooms that we have here at the Schmodown, which check out the Facebook group about round number four. And so how do you as a competitor prepare for a speed round, which you're familiar with, but at the same time, you've never seen one like this before. So how can you prep for an opponent? You don't know what it looks like. Uh, just do what we've been doing, practicing, 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 prepping, prepping, prepping. We've been running drills here um, all day, every day, all week. So yeah, I'm I'm as ready as I'll ever be. And I'm, I'm sure that I'll, I'll come to play. You know, uh, Andrew, we had the champion Alex Damon in here right before um, we showed that epic promo for the both of you guys. And I know how Damon has been. He's He's been the motivation for you. You want to play him, wanted to play him. So just Andres now, first you had Scrimshaw in front of you, then you had Molly Damon in front of you, and now you just have Ace. Is it all about Damon? Like, is that the is that the motivation behind it of playing Damon and taking that title? Yeah, I mean, it is. If I said it before in the first match, if you come into any division, be it this division, the inner geekdom, the singles, the teams, and your goal isn't the title, then you're lying to yourself. If you wanted to come in here and play for fun, then you're not going to perform. You have to have that mentality of going after the belt. 
And that was my, my intention the entire time coming into the division, even when I auditioned, like well, however long it was, a year and a half ago, however long it goes, it was. But yeah, he, I've, I've thought about this for, for a long time. I've been prepping for Alex for a long time. And if you prep for Alex, you're pretty much ready for anybody. All right. Thank you so much, Andrew. Really appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. And his opponent. Representing Swag. With a record of three wins, no defeats in the Star Wars division. Also representing the Meaning of Podcast. Yeah, we coming for them ships. With a record of 3 0, Andres Ace Cabrera. Andres Ace Cabrera. Dude, what a run it has been thus far. They're calling you Rocky. They're saying uh, all these different things. And now, like you said, Upset City, a lot of people have joined you in Upset City, but it wasn't like that in the beginning. Like you said, people were, were doubting you up top and it was kind of motivating you. Has it been because everybody is, it looks like you were winning. There was a poll with over two or 3,000 votes and you were in the lead for that. Now that everybody has kind of jumped on your side, is how, how, does that take away some of the motivation? How, how does that work? No, not at all. I mean, obviously, people have joined the, the hype train now after I've gotten the victories, but I, I, I welcome it. Why not? Jump on board and, and I'll keep going. Ace, you're a famous hydrator. You're a famous consumer of healthy waters with a perfect pH balance. But today... It's a five-round match. So first of all, I want to know, is your bladder going to hold up for five rounds, or do you need to call a timeout? And then, more to the point, round three and round four are ones that you have not competed in before because this is a championship match. So was your preparation different at all leading up to this match? Yeah, I definitely, I've been thinking about speed since I started this tournament because, again, I always go back to Alex Damon, who I've seen his matches, and he dominates the speed round. He's super fast. He's very quick. Uh, so my thing is always to compete with that kind of championship level. So I've already been thinking about speed. Now, the 60 second 10 question thing is different than what I've been thinking about. However, I still feel ready for that. All right, Andres, I got to ask you one last question before we bring Andrew in here and start this thing. Um, swag is only down now by around six points. Now, obviously, a shot at the title is on, on the line here um, and you have potentially, you know, right around the corner is first place. Is that I, I know the answer is, but I have to ask it anyway. Is that added motivation or do you get more nervous? Added motivation, man. I've been wanting to put swag on the map for a minute. I, like I said before, I've been doing this for Winston and for swag and for the faction. Every single one of my members, Paulo Yama, Shandrew, RB3, all of them have been nothing but supportive, nothing but great. So I want to put them in a position to where they can succeed and they can win as well. All right. Well, thank you, Andres. Going to drop you out here for a moment. Bring back uh, Andrew. There's Andres. All right, gentlemen, you have entered the battle arena for the finale of Star Wars. Remember, once again, guys, make sure that you can talk to your managers via private chat. Do not have the live chat up. And remember to show your hands after you've written your questions. And obviously from round two, three, four and five, have your hands up. Um, all right. So, Mark, how do the rules of round number one? How do those, how do those go, Mark? Oh, I thought you'd never ask. In round number one, the field of competitors is going to hear 10 questions from 10 different corners of Star Wars know-how. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing, at least not in round at number one. As soon as we ask the question, competitors have 15 seconds to answer. Write down your answer with whatever utensil you have in front of whatever tablet you prefer. Once we ask you by name to reveal your attempt at an answer, please show what you wrote to your camera. At the same time, you verbalize your answer into the microphone. Throughout the five round match, you'll each have three usages of the JTE rule, named for famed Tuscan Raider, Josh the Engineer. Now a JTE rule is used when you need to buy yourself some time to answer a question for either intellectual or dramatic purposes, you get another 15 seconds. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point throughout the three round match. Excuse me, five rounds. It's a championship match, Christian. They know how to do this stuff. Let's get it on. All right, so we start with Andres. Are you ready? Ready. Andrew, are you ready? Ready. 
And let's get ready to schmoo down. All right, here we go. Round number one. Question number one. Gentlemen, Revenge of the Sith. According to Palpatine, what blinds Master Yoda? Uh, Christian, I've been working on my bird calls. Is now a good time to do them? Uh, no, I would never do that again uh, unless Ben Goddard is involved in a match. And five. Cuck off. Four. Three. Repeat the question. All right. According to Palpatine, what blinds Master Yoda? You got to get settled here, you know? Yep. Settling in. It's a long match, so do what you need to to get those first points on the board. Yep. One VP used. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please, starting with Andres. Arrogance. That is correct. Andrew. Arrogance. Arrogance is correct. One, one. Smart move by Demolanta using that JTE to get himself settled. And we have ourselves a 1-1 one, one game mark. Yes, we do. I know a little something about arrogance. Your next question is from The Force Awakens, Episode 7. What character gives Poe Dameron the map to Luke Skywalker at the film's opening? I noticed, Christian, you put a little extra mustard on that. Let's get ready to schmoot out. That sounded good. I'm hyped. Kidding me? Well, we, sh we should just keep that sound button and just play that over every match. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Andrew. Lor Santeca. Yes. Ace. Lor Santeca. Two, two. As we get to our next question here in the finals, five rounds for the finale of this tournament. The Empire Strikes Back. Question number three. What was Luke Skywalker's rank on Hoth? Laura Santeca played by the great Max von Sydow. Uh, I know we have a lot of new fans here. Old fans will remember that I thought he died in 2008. I'm sorry. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Andres. Commander. Yes. And Andrew. Commander. Three, three. Exactly what we thought we'd be getting here, Mark, as we get to the fourth question. It's early, but you are correct, sir. We go to episode one, The Phantom Menace. Ken Napsok waited three months in line to get tickets. In The Phantom Menace, which Jedi says the Sith have been extinct for nearly a millennium? Which is a long, long, long time. Sure is. Is that a thousand years? Millennium? And five. Four, three, two, one. Pens down and Andrew. Kiari Mundi. Kiari Mundi is correct. And Andres. Whoop. Kiari oh. Mundi. Kiari Mundi is correct. Uh, Ki Mundi would not have been correct. No. All right. So here's the uh, next, next question. All right. Question five is the Clone Wars. What is Jabba's nickname for his son? Uh, Kiati Mundi, is that, uh, I believe, related to Nick Mundy? Good friend of the show. Oh, yeah, there you go. Could be. <laughs> and five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Andres. Punky Muffin. Punky Muffin is correct. And Andrew. Punky Muffin. Unreal, these two. Unreal. As we see ourselves now, Mark, it is now 5-5 five, five as we get to our sixth question. Yeah, I'm still recovering from the knowledge that Jabba had a kid that he called Punky Muffin. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on to the greatest film of all time, Return of the Jedi. And your question. In the film Return of the Jedi, who says, I have a really bad feeling about this? These are classic style questions, and I love that we got one in a championship match. Oh, yeah. I have a good feeling about it, actually. Five, four, three. Repeat two, the question. One for Ace. I can certainly do that in Return of the Jedi. Who says, I have a really bad feeling about this? But again, I still have a good feeling, so. Not on brand, but sorry. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Ace. Pens down. And we start with Andrew. Han Solo. Yes, Andres. I said C3PO. 
did not have it. So uh, uh, Andrew takes his first lead here. Andrew takes his first lead as we get to our next question. Next question here. And it is from The Rise of Skywalker. Who plays the character Allegiant General Pride? A lot of uh, luminaries in the chat, Christian. I see, like I mentioned, Ken Knapsack, who waited six months in line to get tickets. Uh, RB3 is here. Video Drew is here. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Andres. Richard Grant. That is correct. And Andrew? Richard E. Grant. Yes, that is correct. All right. So we get to our next question here. Next question. Mark? That's right. That is category Attack of the Clones. And uh, Demolanta is only three questions away from possibly a perfect round. Here we go. In episode two, who said, I think it is time we inform the Senate that our ability to use the force has diminished? Oh, and don't I know how that feels, Christian, after turning 50 yesterday. That's not a true story. I am an old man, folks. You're no. looking at an old guy in a young person's Four. game. Broke a stole to three, two, <laughs> one. Pens down, please. And Andrew. Mace Windu. Yes. Andres. Mace Windu. There it is. Eight, seven. Dimolanta keeps a one point lead over Andres Ace Cabrera as we get to our ninth question here. Ninth question. The Last Jedi. When Luke sees Leia on crate, he says to Leia, it looks nice that way. What is he referring to? That was a fun premiere, wasn't it? Yeah, you can cut the tension here with a knife. I'll tell you yeah. that. Yeah. This is and uh, five. Armpit stains. Four, three, two, one. Andres? Her hair. Yes. And Andrew? Her hair. And Andrew DeMolanta is one point away from a perfect round here. Um, nine, eight, nine, eight. If he gets it right, only he will have the bonus question. Andres has only missed once, but he still has missed. Here's the next question. That's right, but they both got to get through this movie. Star Wars Episode Four, later titled A New Hope. And your question, what was the cell number that Princess Leia was being held in? Ooh, and if this was like bar trivia, this is where everybody's like, oh, this is the this is the ultimate, and it's only round one. That's right. And Dimolanta going for perfect here as we go five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and Andrew. 2187. Perfect round for Andrew Dimolanta and Andres. 2187. 2187. So Andres Cabrera misses one. Dimolanta will get a bonus question worth one point. This is for you, Andrew. You do not have to write it down. Now, if for some reason that I, if I, for some reason I do not understand and we need to repeat, then you're going to have to write it down. But here we go. Can Ready? I write it on my board? If, if that's you can, it, you can write it on your board, uh, but I doubt that's going to happen. But here we go. Bonus question. Who says the following line from the franchise? It could be any of the movies. I'm ending all of this. The tree, the text, the Jedi. I'm going to burn it all down. Luke Skywalker. For one more point. Andrew DeMolanta. Perfect here. 11-9, 11, 9, 11 9, And we're going to bring back uh, both Bobby Gucci and Winston Marshall here as we get to the rules of round number two. Mark, how's that go? Oh, round number two. This is known as the wheel round. We call it the wheel of justice, fate, but in Star Wars terminology, it is the wheel of destiny. Each competitor gets to spin. If they don't like the category they spin at first, they are allowed a mulligan, which is golf for do over. Once they settle on a category, five questions are going to be asked in that genre. Each question is worth two points. There is, again, no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. Christian is doing the bookkeeping. Each competitor retains use of their challenge. Each competitor still has two JTE rules remaining. All right, because Dimolanta, you have a two point lead here. We're gonna drop Winston out. We're gonna drop Andres out. And Gucci, you got 60 seconds to talk to your competitor about deciding if you want to spin first or second, starting now. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. 
Well, uh, two more JTE, uh, JTE rules left, you know that. Yes. Um, three C's, cool, calm, and collective. You know what we're doing here. All right, so Andrew, I, I really no decision that was really made there. Do you have a decision? Spinning first. Spinning first, all right, wheel will come up. Here we go. And here's the first spin. Christian, not interested in banter anymore. Just <laughs> give us the answer. Oh, he just didn't say anything. He said, you know, he said, you know what we want to do. Nobody else does. Richie to... never says anything. No. A new hope. I got 60 seconds to decide what you want to do. 60 seconds starting now. We don't need 60 seconds. Let's go. All right. He's going to take it. All right. So we're going to drop Gucci out. Thank God. And now we're going to bring back um, Andres Cabrera. There we go. All right. Andrew, you're going to get five questions in the realm of a new hope. All right. New hope. Here we go. What is the name of the Imperial commander that served on the Devastator and was tasked with finding the plans on Tatooine? Commander Proji. That is correct for two points. Demolanta. All right. What is the alphanumeric designation of the stormtrooper that wasn't at his post outside of the Millennium Falcon on the Death Star? TK421. Yes, two more points for Demolanta. Question three. Where was Luke planning to go to have R2-D2's memory erased? Anchorhead. Yes, for two more points. That is question three. Question four. Luke is frustrated when trying to sell his land speeder because his model is no longer in demand because of what new model of speeder? XP38. Yes. And your final question. Your final question here, Andrew, in uh, round number two for your wheel round. All right. Who says to Han, hey, I knew there was more to you than money? Princess Leia. For two more points, Andrew DeMolanta staying perfect here, lighting up round number two, going up 21 to nine over Andres Cabrera. We're going to drop you out here, uh, Andrew, and now bring in Winston Marshall. You get 60 seconds here, Winston. You get 60 seconds to talk to Ace starting now. First of all, you see I took the glasses off because I want you to look me in my eyes right now. Look, look directly at my image because I'm going to look right in the camera. Let it go. To quote Frozen and all them little children that said it, let it go. All right. You know why? Because what I love about watching you play this game is you're the only person that I see that actually has fun doing this. So let's keep having fun, baby. Let's keep having fun. You know what I'm saying? I got you, man. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, Let's go. Drift, drift. Let's go. Drift, drift. Let's go. Drift, drift. I don't know how much time I got, but I'm going to keep going till you say I can't talk no more. Let's go. Drift, drift. Let's go. Uh, uh. All right, we're going to cut uh, you off now. Uh, All right, let's bring, the, let's bring the wheel back. I'm probably done because you pulled it off my face. All right, well, congratulations. All right, here, here's the, I care, by the way. Here's the, here's, and I have fun. Here's the spin. Christian, I, I was just going to let Winston go. He looked like he had another six yeah. seconds of air left in him. Yeah, he did, but I wanted Let's to. Let's go, drip, drip. <laughs> and, the spin. And, and you got the Phantom Menace. Do you have 60 seconds to decide what you want to do? Here we go. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I don't see anything else on there that. Yeah, let's do it. Why well, not? You feel good about it? Yeah, I feel great about it. Great. Then let's do it. All right. Thank you, Winston. Going to drop you out here. Going to bring back uh, Andrew. Oh, sorry. There. All right. Bringing back Andrew. And here's Andres. Andres, you get six questions in the realm of the Phantom Menace. Are you ready? Five, Five questions. There we go. Question. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. Oh, good. Now I'm on. Ken Napsack waited nine months in line to see this movie. And now five questions to you, Andres. Each one worth two points. In The Phantom Menace, what shocking discovery does Padme make when she arrives on Tatooine and visits Mos Espa? That there's still slavery in the galaxy? Two points, that is correct. Okay. Two points, all right, next question, question two. All right. 
in The Phantom Menace. Why didn't the Jedi Council want Anakin to be trained according to Mace Windu? He's too old. Too old to begin the training. That's from another guy, but you still get two points. All right, question three. In episode one, The Phantom Menace, Qui-Gon Jinn said he's witnessed pod racing on what other planet? Malastare. And it's better there, in my opinion. That's two more points, and Christian Ace, perfect. Through three questions, he's got two left in episode one. Your penultimate question, Andres. What character says the ability to speak does not make you intelligent? Qui-Gon Jinn. And I prove that every day. Two more points, one question away from a perfect round. Andres, for that perfect round in round number two, in The Phantom Menace, who was in charge of the Space Fighter Corps on Naboo? Rick Olier. Ladies and gentlemen, got a perfect round from both competitors, Christian. Unbelievable there. 21-19, Andres Cabrera also having a perfect round in the realm of Phantom Menace and still keeps himself in distance as he's down two points to Andrew DiMolanta. 21-19 as we get into the betting round, round number three. Mark, how does that go? Round number three as the managers dance the perfect rounds. This is known as the betting round. Whoever's in the lead, and that is going to be the hunter in this case, is going to get another spin at the wheel. Whatever category that wheel lands on, the field of competition is going to hear one question from that genre. The value of that question is up to the competitors. Once we settle on the category, before we ask the question, each competitor is going to have to bet a certain amount of points. You may wager up to three points. You may wager as little as zero points. You can also wager one or two points. It's really up to you. And when Here's you do that, sorry, real quick, Mark, when you do that, when you write your questions down, put your, you're going to put your betting points down in the private chat first before we answer the question. Okay. So so we, you will spin the category, and as soon as we know the category, you will put your points in the private chat. Sorry, Mark. Yeah, I, was, I was just getting to that. Sorry, buddy. Anyway, that's pretty much it. If you lose the question and you miss the answer, you lose that many points. So be careful how much you wager. If you get the question right, you, of course, gain that many points. So points can be won or lost in the betting round. All right, so we will start here. The wheel will come up. Uh, we're, first of all, we will have uh, Winston Marshall. Winston Marshall. Yes, Winston? Quick question. So normally whenever the betting round happens, it is a secret to the other competitor about what they are betting. So I'm just curious about that and potentially... I mean, if, the, if both of the competitors don't care, I'm just throwing that out there because that is you gotta do it simultaneously. You got to do it simultaneously. Once you have the, I'm going to say three, two, one, and you're both going to put it in there at the same time. Sure. Copy that. All right. So, all right, let's, uh, let's start here with Andrew DeMolanta, who will have the spin here. And there's the spin. All right. I love all the new viewers that we have today. We're on the homepage of Twitch, and we have a veritable crap ton of viewers. So yeah, thanks, so everybody, for watching. And if there is the... <laughs> wow. That looks heroes. dead on. It's Heroes and Villains. It's on the left-hand okay. corner. Heroes okay. and Villains it is. So, Heroes and Villains. So, guys, on the count, three, two, one. Three, two, one. Make sure that you guys put it into the private chat. Heroes and villains. Ace, are you ready? You ready. ready, Andrew? Here we go. Three, two, one. All right, gentlemen, here we go. In Solo, what character says to Han, let me give you some advice. Assume everyone will betray you and you will never be disappointed. I don't think that's bad advice uh, here on this planet. No, I don't think you're right. Am I right, K-Dog? That's right, Billy. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Andres, how many points? Uh, I bet three. And you said? Tobias Beckett. And Andrew, how many points? Three points. And you said? Tobias Beckett. Both are correct. So Andrew DiMolanta keeps his two-point lead. Keeps his two-point lead as we get into round number four. This is the speed round. 24-22, Andrew keeping his lead, and we're going to bring in back Winston and Gucci. And, Mark, this is a different kind of speed round, so tell us how round four works. That's right. We didn't really need to do the betting round. We could have just given these guys three points, but now 
the metal really is going to meet the road here because it's a new speed round for everyone. In round at number four, each competitor is going to hear 10 questions. It's the same 10 questions as your opponent. However, it is not going to be at the same time. So one competitor is going to remain in this stream while the other competitor goes to a different stream so we can keep an eye on them not listening in. Remember, Family Feud kind of works like that. Once the competitor is locked in, we begin. You have 60 seconds to answer as many of the 10 questions as possible. If you get a question correct, you gain a point. If you incorrectly answer a question, you lose a point. If we ask a question and you're not sure of the answer, you may simply say pass and we'll move on to the next question. There is no penalty or loss of point if you pass on a question. If we have exhausted all questions and you still have time left in your 60 second window, we will re-ask any question that you passed on again. Doesn't matter how many times we ask the question, there's never a penalty if you pass on the question. There's only a penalty if you wager an incorrect answer. So Christian, could be as many as 10 points for a competitor, could be as little as negative 10 points. I don't think that's gonna be the case, but 60 seconds is the cap. Bobby Gooch, you have 60 seconds to talk to Demolanta to decide if you guys want to go first or second, starting now. You're damn right, we want to go first. Ain't yeah, right. Yeah, you want to go first. That's it. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. All right. So, Andres and Winston. Andres, we're going to drop you out. Winston has chosen to stay. He's going. Winston's going to stay, and Winston will be watching with his hands up. Hands up. Same thing, Gooch. Hands mm -hmm. up. Hands up. Um, throughout the whole thing, we're going to bring Winston back in. Andres will be removed to a separate stream, but there's no challenges in this round anyway. There's no repeats in this round. So, Andrew, make sure during this round, you uh, you can choose pass. You, if you want, you will not lose a point by saying pass. But remember that you have to enunciate and make sure that you have the exact words. All right, here we go. Winston is back. Hands up, Winston. Both hands, please. Two hands up. Uh, if I've warned the managers that if they drop their hands during this, they will be docked a point. Their competitor will be docked a point in the round. All right. So we're going to put 60 seconds on the clock here. Andrew, you're ready to go? Yes. All right. Starting now. Geneva O'Reilly plays which character in Rogue One? Mon Mothma. What is the first name of the Ewok Leah befriends on Endor? Wicked. Who directed The Empire Strikes Back? Irving Kirshner. How many films in the Star Wars series did George Lucas direct? Four. Who plays Dryden Voss in Solo? Pass. By what title is Tarkin called by Krennic in Rogue One? Pass. What is the home planet of the Wookiees as seen in Revenge of the Sith? Cheek. What is the name of the informant Cassian meets on Kafreen? Tivik. In The Force Awakens, who says that's not how the Force works? Han. In how many theatrically released films did Harrison Ford appear in Hans, as Han Solo? Six. And who plays Dryden Voss in Solo? Uh, all right, time's out. Paul Bettany. Uh, Time's out on that one. Time's out. Time ran out. All right. So we're going to drop you out. Gucci is in. Gucci is in. Andres is back. Andres, you're going to get the same questions. Uh, we're going to make sure. Can you make sure? Uh, I just need the writing team to make sure to unhighlight. And then we are going to get you 60 questions here, Andres. And you will not be revealed what you what Andrew got until after the okay. round is over. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Ready. 60 seconds on the clock. Starting now, Genevieve O'Reilly plays which character in Rogue One? Mon Mothma. What is the first name of the Ewok Leah befriends on Endor? Uh, Wicket. Who directed The Empire Strikes Back? Um, Irving Kirshner. How many films in the Star Wars series did George Lucas direct? Four. Who plays Dryden Voss in Solo? Paul Bettany. By what title is Tarkin called by Krennic in Rogue One? Uh, pass. What is the home planet of the Wookiees as seen in Revenge of the Sith? Kashyyyk. What is the name of the informant Cassian meets on Kafreen? Tivik. In The Force Awakens, who says that's not how the Force works? Uh, Han Solo. In how many theatrically released films did Harrison Ford appear as Han Solo? Four. By what title is Tarkin called by... Grand off. All right. So, with that, Ace has Just finished... Just on time. 
Ace has finished all the questions. I'm going to read all the questions and give the answers to you all right now as we put the score in. Genevieve O'Reilly plays which character in Rogue One? Mon Mothma. What is the first name of the Ewok Leia of Friends on Endor? Wicked. Who directed The Empire Strikes Back? Irvin Kirshner. How many films in the Star Wars series did George Lucas direct? Four. How? Uh, who plays Dryden Voss in Solo? Paul Bettany. By what title is Tarkin called by Krennic in Rogue One? Governor. What is the home planet of the Wookiees as seen in Revenge of the Sith? Kashyyyk. What is the name of the informant Cassian meets on Kafreen? Tivik. In The Force Awakens, who says that's not how the Force works? Han Solo. How many theatrically released films did Harrison Ford appear as Han Solo? Five. So that was the answer. So at the end of round number four, the score now. Dimolanta, 29. Cabrera, 28. One point separates these two gentlemen as we get to the final round, round number five. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Unbelievable, 29, 28. And Mark, how's round number five going? Round number five works as thus. This is the round that will determine the match lest we go to sudden death overtime. In round number five, it's a lot like round number three in a garden variety match. You're gonna give us a series of numbers. We need numbers from each one of you. These numbers can range from one to 20. Each number corresponds to a different corner of Star Wars know-how. Once we get your numbers, that's going to correspond to said corner. Your first question is going to be worth two points. Your next one's worth three points. Your last one, should we make it that far, is going to be worth five big points. So, Christian, because Andrew Demolanta still has a one-point lead going into round number five, him and his team are going to get to give us their three lucky numbers ranging from one to 20 first. Well, first, before we do that, we're going to also have 60. Oh, you're right. You're absolutely right. All right. So go ahead, Andrew. Give me, give me your numbers. 7, 11, 18. 7, 11, 18 for the Hunter and for Andres. Um, let's go 6, 9, 13. 6, 9, and 13. All right. Now, Abi Gucci, you got 60 seconds to talk to your competitor starting now. Wait, so it's actually it's it's actually 3028 now. They made a switch. Is that what the thing is here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Each, up two now. Math each was competitor, off. each okay. competitor got the same amount in the speed round, which mm -hmm. is great because then we just continue on with the two point lead that we've had for the last couple rounds. Gotcha. So thirty so the score is thirty twenty eight. Thirty twenty eight. Perfect. So the math was off by a point. Uh thirty twenty eight is two point lead by Dimolanta. So all right, go ahead. Sixty seconds. Great job. Perfect. Collective. Amazing. Let's finish it off here, man. Let's take it home. You know exactly what to do. Yep. All right. So, and Winston, you got 60 seconds starting now. Hey, man. I'm proud of you. That's it. Let's go have Let's fun. Up. Let's win. I got it, man. Let's, Let's go. Win it all. Let's win it all because you know what happens, right? It's funny. I've, I've watched enough of these Star Wars films in the last couple of weeks. I don't know if uh, Gucci has or not. But it's all about it's all about the rebels being down, the rebellion being down, and then what happens at the end? The force always comes through, baby. The force always comes through. You see that? He's upset, but you're smiling. You know why? Because you're having fun, baby. Let's go. All right. Thank you to Winston. Thank you to Ace. All right, gentlemen, going to drop out the managers here as we get to the fifth and final round here. This is 30-28. The Milanta with a two-point Two-point lead over Andres Ace Cabrera. All right. Andres, you chose category six for your first question. Category six. Okay, so it doesn't matter if I did three first? Because I said three, six, nine, three, six, uh, 13. Oh, you said three, six, 13? I have, yeah. six, I have six, nine, and 13. What did you do? Oh, I'm so, I, I apologize. You are correct. Six, okay. nine, and 13. Six, nine, and 13. Okay. Yeah. No worries. No My worry. brain is fried. That's okay. Too much math, guys. Too That's much math. That's all right. Apologies. Six, nine, and 13. All yes. right. Here we go. Villains. What prequel character was the first of the Zabrak species to appear in the Star Wars movie? Repeat the question. Second one. What prequel character was the first of the Zabrak species to appear in a Star Wars movie? Four. 
five, four, three, two, one. Darth Maul? I don't know. Looking for Darth Maul. Oh my God. Darth Maul. Darth Maul. So now, three pointer, three pointer here. Andres, you chose number nine. Number nine. All right, here you go. Number nine. Planets and locations. Here you go. What location in the original trilogy prompted C-3PO to remark, I told you it was dangerous here. Endor. That is correct for three points. So Andres takes the lead. Andres takes the lead. And here we go. Andres takes the lead. And we go over to Andrew Demolanta, Mark, who chose Category 7 for his two-pointer. Yes, he did, Christian. And uh, Joe Theismann's number corresponds to Episode 7, The Force Awakens. That's your category, The Hunter. And your question for two points and to recapture the lead. Why did C-3PO think Han Solo might not recognize him? Because of his new red arm. Christian, Andrew Demolanta is back on top. All right, so this is what, this is where we stand. Andres Cabrera needs to hit this five pointer. If he does, he forces the hand of Andrew Demolanta to win the match. However, if he misses, Andrew Demolanta goes on to play Alex Damon for the championship and he will have won the Star Wars tournament. Andres, you chose category 13. Category 13, it's the Phantom Menace. Okay. What was the name of the droid control ship destroyed by Anakin Skywalker? Vutan Pala. For five points, Ace fighting to the very end here. 36, 32. Andrew's going to have to hit his five in order to win, but he can still get himself some big points here and, pot and potentially break some records. So here is the question mark for uh, Andrew DeMolanta. Category 11 he chose. Category 11. That's right. Category 11. And um, yeah, it's a three-point question. He doesn't need to answer this one. But if he does and gets his five, then he'll have 40 points in one match. All right. So, Christian, I'm not great at math. You said 11. He, yes, he chose number 11 for his three-pointer. And Mark Rippon's number corresponds to Solo, a Star Wars story. And Andrew, your question, to pull to within one of your leader, Ace, in Solo, A Star Wars Story, who voiced the serpent-like gang leader on Corellia, Lady Proxima? Linda Hunt. For three. And we're in one. All right. So here is where we stand. Andres Cabrera has a one-point lead here, 36-35. If Demolanta misses, then Andres Cabrera will be going on to face the champion Alex Damon at the, Sh at the Schmodown Spectacular in December. However, if Demolanta hits it, he is the new number one contender. Andrew, you chose category 18. Mark, category 18. All right, Christian. I mean, did, did you want anything else from this match, fans? Watch it. Did you want anything else for the win? Andrew the Hunter Demolanta has selected the category 18, which corresponds to droids. And your question for a 40 point match and the win. What is the name of the droid that can be seen torturing a gonk droid in Return of the Jedi? Five, four. Repeat the question. Second one. Category is droids. And the question for five points, what is the name of the droid that can be seen torturing a gonk droid in Return of the Jedi? Five, four, three, two, one and your winner ladies and gentlemen andres ace
my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! 8D8. 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 Andrew gonna have to put you in the waiting room at the moment here. Andres, you did it. You did it. You won. And man, it looked like I, I, dude, I thought it was over. I thought it was over. Uh, I thought he had it. I thought he was playing coy. I was, uh, yeah, I'm kind of speechless at the moment. It I looks like Winston was too. How are you feeling? I, I'm speechless as well. I, I, I missed. I, I missed a few that I should have gotten. I mean, Darth Maul for crying out loud, one of my all-time favorite characters. I don't know how I blanked on that. Uh, uh, I don't know. I just felt like I was on the ropes, and it was just kind of me trying to hang on the ropes to just not fall down. But sure enough, I guess destiny had another answer. Uh, so here we go, man. Alex Damon, let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Winston, it says I'm it all. Ask you because I'm I'm looking at this image of you covering your mouth with both hands. Uh, if we could remove those hands to get the answer to this question. How are you feeling about Andres Ace Cabrera at this moment? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Look, it, this For is- For the first time in my Schmodown career, I have no words. <laughs> it, go ahead, Andres. Andres, good. Yeah, well, my thing is, Andrew, man, I, I, I know I, I, we have to, you know, keep keep going at it and all that, but I, I think Andrew's a beast, man. Oh, yeah. Want, uh, all credit to him. Like, he played an amazing game. Um, he got that Han Solo question. Uh, I should have gotten that. I, I was jumping in between C, uh, C-3PO and Solo, so he, he was able to pull that out. And obviously, all, all credit to him, to Gucci, to everyone at Exchange. Like, much love to you guys, obviously. And obviously to Winston, too, for even bringing me this far. Well, I do have wow. – I do have, yeah, it, it is – It is. it was absolutely insane. It was an insane match. But, Andres, let me say this real quick. You went from being the last one of the last seeds in the tournament, a playing match to the first competitor ever to go 4 and 0. Yeah. If you beat Alex Damon, if you beat him, you will tie his record of five straight Star Wars matches. You are now getting a shot at the title. Who would you have thought that in the beginning of the season by playing Robert Parker? Now look at you. 4 and 0, Star Wars number 1 contender winning the whole entire tournament. I I would have not imagined this. I mean, maybe maybe me a couple weeks ago, I was feeling confident enough to do this. Uh, but going through this match now and realizing a couple missteps that I took in the speed round, again, my first round misstep, I, I thought those were going to hurt me in the long run. My two-pointer, that was so easy that I should have gotten. But again, I, I keep coming back. I hit my five-pointer. I keep showing resilience. Uh, and yeah, this is it's paid off. All my studying is paid off, I guess. Well, all right. Look, so I, yeah, go ahead. I, I, I found my voice finally. Um, so here's the thing that I think that everybody can take to the bank. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, look at Andrew DeMolanta, man. You fought one hell yeah. of a fight, sir. That was incredible. You took that lead and you did not let it go. And there's a reason why you were as lethal as you are. That was absolutely phenomenal. All right. Well, <laughs> we want to. We want to drop you out here for a second. A little look. I want to also let the fans know that if you join Patreon, Patreon wow. patreon.com slash schmodown. Patreon.com slash schmodown. Please join today. We have a lot of pay-per-views coming up, some big things. $10 tier, you get John Roca versus Ethan Irwin. So many big things happening. But at the $10 tier, you can join this stream and talk to Winston Marshall and Andres Cabrera, the winner of the tournament, in just a little bit. But until then, we're going to drop you guys out just for a moment here once again. Andres, congratulations. Thank you. I'm going to put you out uh, in the waiting room. Winston, congratulations. As Swag now moves within uh, just a few points of first place. Now we're going to bring in Bobby Gucci, Andrew DiMolanta. Andrew, uh, look, man. You fought really, really hard. I know. I know how much you wanted this, and I and I and I saw it on your face. Uh, it, it, it's, it's just it, it happens. How are you feeling right now? I don't even want to talk right now. Um, I, I don't know. He doesn't have to talk. I'll talk for him. Yeah. I mean, look, he has nothing to hang his head about. That was a fantastic match. I mean, I was. Everybody was on the edge of the seat. It was as advertised. Um, you know, we thought we. You know, we were looking like we had it. Uh, speed round with some tough questions uh 
Ace just came through. Much respect to him and Swag. I mean, I guess the glass slipper flit, fits over there. Good for them. Uh, you know, the Finstock Exchange don't cry. You know, we 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 um, we take our lumps here and there. I mean, look, you know, he, he came in and put two great rounds in, uh, and you know, beat Scrimshaw and uh, Homegirl uh, Molly Damon. But uh, Ace just came and played today, and you know, the ball didn't bounce it our way. Unfortunately. Um, I mean, I'm just as speechless as Andrew is at this point. Um, it felt good. It felt real good. Uh, we were prepared, fully prepared. That was a tough, tough, tough question. Well, I don't think I, anybody I that, would have got that. Andrew, I think that, uh, I, obviously, look, I've seen the greats. I've seen the greats take losses like this, and it's, it's terrible. Um, but I do have some good news for you, because the Star Wars division is very different from other divisions. And normally what happens in the regular tournaments is with the number one contenders, the way that Star Wars matches in general work that you've been a part of it. If you have played someone who has had at least one match in Star Wars, then you had an opportunity to get a number one contender match. You, my friend, have two victories in the tournament. You will, should Ace win against, against Alex Damon, get the first shot at Ace as champion. However, if... Damon wins. Damon will get the rematch, and then you'll get the winner of that. So you have yourself a title shot. It is wait, wait, wait. Can, so, you have yourself a title shot. It's just a matter of when. So you're going to wait out the winner of either if Andres wins the title, you'll get Andres. If Damon wins, he'll get an. If Damon loses, he'll get an automatic rematch. So you will get an automatic. You will get a title shot. It's just a matter of when because of your two victories that you've had on both Scrimshaw, who was a number one contender, and and Molly Damon, who also had one victory. So you are going to get yourself a title shot. It's just you're just going to have to be you're – you're in the waiting line. So anyway, just wanted to – real quick, Dimolanta, real quick. I wanted to ask you because, well, people said, what about Laura Kelly? Dimolanta won two matches. Laura won one. Laura Kelly most likely will be in line, but Andrew – Talk to me a little about it. I know that you're you're upset, and I understand why. But did you know the question, and did did it blank, or is that just one that kind of slipped it, through? This one, it's one that slipped through the cracks. Um, I thought I had gone through everything and known everything there is to know about all the categories, but it was just it's it's my twelfth. It's another twelfth movie out situation. The one that I just overlooked. One that I just didn't. I just haven't didn't haven't put in my notes. So. Um, yeah, I mean, you said you said that I have a title shot in the future, so you can bet your that I'm gonna. I'm sorry, you can bet that I'm going to be yeah. doubling, I, tripling down everything. So I didn't word it exactly right because in, in the heat of the moment, basically what it means is, uh, once again, if Damon if Damon loses the championship, mm -hmm. then you will be waiting. You'll be waiting because Damon will get the automatic shot. If Damon defends it, you would get Damon. Okay. That's that's how it works. Now, the reason why is because of the defenses and how and and how the Star Wars division works as a whole. But it, we've found a lot of new contenders in here. And speaking with uh, Alex Damon, he wants he wants all the contenders. So, um, all right. I wanted to again, if we have the updated standings before we let Gucci know, Gucci, you see yourself in first place, three points behind, uh, three points ahead of Swag now, 25, 22 Finstock exchange now. Up by three points over Swag. Could have been a big one, but you got to be sweating a little bit over Swag. I mean, look, you know, uh, drafting Ace 10th and getting 12 points in a Star Wars tournament. I mean, I can't even talk. It's, that was a tough one. You get 12 points from a 10th round pick. It's pretty amazing stuff. They're doing big things. But like I said, Finstock Exchange doesn't die. Here's what we're going to do from here on out. Just continue what we've been doing, winning. Uh, we're not We're not scared. Like I said, when the chips are down, we're still the best in town. And don't forget this. When it's all said and done, the king and the pawn go back in the same box. Well, thank you there, Gooch. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah, and wait, sorry, I'm sorry. Before before we yeah. go, I do, I do want to say congratulations to Ace. I mean, he, he went from all the way to the bottom to the top of this tournament. Broke up a little bit there, so we lost him. But congratulations lost him. On, a, on a great match. 
you, we lost you at the at the end there, Andrew. But we we got the uh, we got the gist. Uh, the, I think class. It was, it was it was a great show of sportsmanship from somebody who's got to be hurting right now, and it's a sports entertainment division. And the Schmodown is sports entertainment. In the context of sports, you win, you lose, and sometimes you're speechless after ease. But just in the realm of entertainment, Andrew, I just wanted to tip my hat to you because you entertained a galaxy with your play, not just in this match, but in this tournament. And if nothing else, you got a lot more eyeballs on you. What a class act you are on your shows beyond the Schmodown and going rogue. I encourage everybody to listen to those great podcasts. Yep. Yep. You're building a great career for yourself. It's a loss. It's tough to swallow. But in the grand scheme of things, you're still doing things the right way. And we all look up to you. So very classy in defeat, my man. Uh, appreciate everything that you've done for the league. Uh, thank you very much. Going to remove both of you guys here. Thank you, Gooch. All right, one more before we bring in both uh, Andres and the champion, Alex Damon, to talk just a little bit about their upcoming match. I uh, wanted to remind you guys that if you're watching for the very first time, well, obviously Skybound Expo is going to be happening on live July 18th and 19th. You've got the Inner Geek t- Tournament match, SEN Live, and a lot more. Skyboundexpo.com. Sign up there and RSVP to the expo. And also join Patreon, patreon.com slash schmodown. And if you are brand new, if you're brand new to this uh, wonderful game here that we have, youtube.com slash the schmodown catch up on everything happening in season seven we have a full playlist over there we'd love to get you to subscribe over there very important to to keep the league going so youtube.com slash the schmodown all right so we're bringing back andres cabrera who is still in shock as we now are bringing up you're not it's not over yet for you my friend although you have a little bit of a break you are now going to be facing quite possibly the, well, definitely maybe your hardest challenge so far, but the most dominant champion we've ever seen in this league. He is Alex the Demon Damon. There he is. Alex, you look like you're in shock too. Guys, both of you, Ace and Andrew, that was incredible. Like, competition aside, I just love Star Wars trivia. That was amazing. Like, I tried to fix my hair, but I was downstairs, like, just pulling it. How, uh, how, did you know that that last question, the five-pointer? Uh, I... I don't want to kick him while he's down. I knew 8d8, but I didn't know aces. Like, it, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Yeah. Uh, these five-pointers have been insane. Uh, and it's been like a coin flip as to whether or not I know them. Uh, yeah. that You are going so deep with these questions now. It's incredible. <laughs> um, yeah. Ace, yes. I, I never uh, declare uh, my or predict a favorite. I never root for anybody. I wasn't rooting for anybody today. I wanted to see a great match and have really everything just go off from a technical standpoint, which it did, thanks to our crew. But now that you are the winner, you look back at, at our history, you being an intern at Schmoes No and, and just rising through the ranks and building such an incredible career and representing you and your family so well. And then you come back to Schmoes in a way that, Maybe nobody expected with the movie trivia Schmodown and not just competing and now just running through this tournament. How, how do you protect uh, someone? Do you like have that? any chance in this last five or ten minutes of just thinking about that? Is your whole life flashing before your eyes, young man? Yes, it kind of is. Because again, I go back to the match, uh, and Demolanta was hitting me with everything he had. So uh, this is something that I was like, oh man, like I really have to come back, but I have to expect this guy to miss. And that's not something this guy does. So I, I was kind of hesitant towards everything. But Alex Damon said it best. A five pointer is a toss up. You know, some some, you know, some you don't. And, and I happen to know this one and I happen to know the ones I've hit in the past. But there are some that, that are always going to be difficult to hit, even for for someone like a Alex Damon or a Dimolanta. So it, it's always just a coin toss kind of thing. And if I had just kept going and kept being resilient, that was kind of my attitude throughout the whole thing being down. Let me ask you about that, uh, Alex, because that's one of the things, too. I mean, I I even said it, too. When you look at what just happened here with Andres, I mean, I think Andres even probably tell you he thought he was he thought he might have been over there with that five pointer. Um, The guy just it seems like you can't you can't get him out. Uh, Is that does that make you nervous going into this title match here in December at Spectacular? This is now this is now another spectacular that you're going to be, uh, you know, this is what your third spectacular, I believe that you're going into. So yeah, I've lost count. I just, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, it didn't matter who won today. I was, I knew I was already nervous. It was just like, who's it going to be? And uh, yes, I'm terrified of ACE. He, he has pulled 
two five pointers in a row that to me are are just insane. Uh, his last match, and, and frankly, I do have to say, Ace, you annoy me a little bit. You don't have a loss on your record, and I do. So now, that's what I have to do. That's my goal. Like, I'm sorry, but I have to make your record look like mine. Yeah. <laughs> That's I get it. I get it. And, and I just want a clean sweep. I want to go 5-0, uh, and 0, <laughs> and I want to go all the way. So this is perfect. That's why it's a perfect matchup. All right. So I want to thank you, Alex, for coming in here today. Thank you for, uh, obviously, both you guys. Can't wait for it. It's going to happen in December. The Schmodown Spectacular 5. Andres Cabrera, the new number one contender for the Star Wars Championship 4-0, goes up against 5-1, the champion of the Star Wars division, looking for his fourth title defense here, Alex the Demon Damon. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much, Alex. Appreciate it. Andres, Ace Cabrera, the number one contender for the Star Wars Championship. Gentlemen, congratulations, Andres. Hell of a match, man. Really appreciate everything that you guys have done uh, this season. Thank you so much, guys. I, I really appreciate you guys. And obviously, happy birthday, Mark. I did it for you, man. It was all for you. There you go. You got to find another birthday by December. Yeah, I got to oh, do my it. My birthday's in December. The oh, best birthday yet. Uh, Let's go. Swag, swag, drip, drip. Yeah, we coming for them champs. Swag, <laughs> swag, drip, drip. Eat everybody. We don't need a bill. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Both those guys. Uh, very excited, as they should be. So that's it. That's the match. That's the tournament. It's over. It's done. The inner geekdom, by the way, 35-36 is the final score here. Andres Ace Cabrera wins the Star Wars tournament over Andrew the Hunter de Melanta. 36-35. He is the number one contender. And there is the overall, there is the overall winner. Andres Ace Cabrera beats Josh Quevedo. Wins four matches to win the entire tournament. Beats Quevedo. Beats Ken Nabsock, beats Laura Kelly, beats Dimalanta. He is four and zero. Oh. All right. Well, thank you again, and what? A, and thank you to you guys, by the way, for being here with us. A lot of people, a lot of brand new people here today joining um, the stream. We're going to be looking to do some new content on Twitch for the Schmodown. If you didn't already follow us here on Twitch, please do that. If you feel like subscribing, we'd love to have you subscribe. So please do that also. We are brand new. We also have a new clip out channel, by the way. We have a trivia Schmodown quick clips on YouTube. Just started it and already have over uh, 5,200 people who have just subscribed just on today. So it's, if you want to get little quick bites of what the Schmodown is, go on over there and subscribe there. So thank you to you guys. Thank you to Mark Ellis, and thank you to the entire Schmodown universe. And once again, congratulations to Andres Ace Cabrera. We'll see you next time.